Okay, here we go again. So it's the official launch of the Praxis Probiotics Booch and Burger Bash. We've got the live podcast happening. Uh, thanks to our man Chef and Jordi on the sound. Um, very exciting. So joined by my guests today, some people I've got the utmost respect for. Uh, we thought that it would be a great opportunity to do these live podcasts uh, at the Booch and Burger Bash because it's an opportunity to kind of like... Uh, kind of like introduce people in the community that are doing some really exciting, interesting, inspiring, important work uh, for us to kind of share thoughts and ideas about things that matter to us and try and involve people a little bit as well. I'll sow the seed now if it's kind of like okay that we'd really appreciate it if as we're having a little chat in the kind of first 10 to 15 minutes that you know if anybody has any kind of questions or thoughts or opinions or ideas that they'd like to share we're going to try and make the kind of the latter half the last sort of 15 minutes much more interactive uh, so our man Matt Praxis at the back he's got the other radio mic and he'll be coming around and if anybody's got any questions that they'd like to ask directly to our guests then you can please feel free to ask questions but it doesn't have to be asking questions to the guests if you've got any responses that you'd like to make or anything at all any opinions or any ideas or any announcements of sorts that you might like to make then please feel free put your hand up Matt will be looking around as, as we're having a podcast and then uh, everybody hopefully will have an opportunity to say the things that matter to them it's Valentine's Day so there's love in the air and love's a very very important concept and value and virtue and it means many many different things to many many different people so we're going to kind of be skirting about love a little bit in all of its various forms but before that, I'm going to invite my guests here. So we've got my friend Jamie Gratton, we've got Vanessa Boone, and we've got Sam Hempsall. And I'm just going to invite you all to just introduce yourself, tell people a little bit about yourself, and why, you know, obviously you know, you know why I might have invited you here, due to the, you know, the various things we might have done in the past or whatever. But you're involved in various things. You'll have various opportunities to talk about them in more detail, but if you could just give a little intro, that'd be wonderful, starting with you, Jamie. Thank you. Um, my name's Jamie. I've been, up until two weeks ago, I've been working within the recovery community within Derby, um, helping people look at holistic ways of starting long-term recovery from addiction. Um, I've recently moved over to social prescribing and actually bringing that holistic view within doctor surgeries as well. Um, it's something I'm very passionate about. I've been in recovery now for 20 years through addiction and self-care and self-love and community care is one of the main reasons I've actually can stand, sit here today and actually do the work I've been doing. So I'm very much focused within the community spirit, self-care, self-community care, self-love and kindness to themselves really. So that's a bit about me. Can we make some noise for Jamie? That's amazing, man. Massive respect, bro. And then please, Vanessa, the same question to yourself. Hi, I'm Vanessa Boon. I My day job is I'm a self-employed equality and diversity trainer and social justice project worker. And my way of balancing love in my life is for every day of paid work, I give back a day of free work to community projects, which is my way of trying to do all the things I really want to do, but there's no money for that are really needed, uh, whilst also needing to make the rent. In reality, it's probably a lot more of the free work. There are probably more days of those than the paid days um, because I feel really drawn to projects. Uh, so I'm involved in things like Hope Not Hate Activism. I'm chair of International Women's Day Derby. I'm a trustee with Disability Direct. I run a community radio station. I need to talk to Nicolette about getting airplay for this amazing voice on the radio, <laughs> on Derby Sound Community Run Radio, amongst other things that I'm sure we'll explore. So thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. Can we make some noise for Vanessa Boone? And then Sam. Hello. <laughs> I'm really sorry if I end up stumbling over my words doing this. Um, I am a, a human. That's what I am. <laughs> um, so I'm here on stage today because Simon has asked me to come down and the wonderful Emma doing Universal Love Letters. So um, Universal Love Letters is a concept that me and Emma sort of came up with. Um, it all started off, we went to the Mind Body Spirit Festival in Birmingham and there was a lady there, um, ironically, another Sam as well with red hair. And she had come up with the concept of global love letters and she was really ill in hospital one time. 
and she basically had a lot of people come to her with all these letters and how that ended up being universal love letters we pretty much thought well if it's a free love concept movement we can pretty much adapt that to Derby so the idea is that you write a love letter um, you can write to you pour your heart out onto this piece of paper write whatever you want write a picture and just sign it the universe loves you I love you and then we leave it in really special places for people to find really obscure places um, so we do that and I also co-facilitate with Emma um, part of Derby Rebel Projects. Derby Rebel Projects is a concept that our friend Kelly introduced to us. She is currently working in the Netherlands in an eco-governance project but um, she passed on Derby Rebel Projects to us and part of what we do is run we run a self-care cafe project around Derby, so it's just co-facilitating a workshop. We get people to come and share um, their stories and their ideas of what self-care means to them. And we're just looking, we're really open for coming up with ideas about how to share and create self-care in the community. And it's really nice just to get people to come and talk about what self-care means to them. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We can make some noise for Samantha Hemsell. Excellent. Okay. Thank you all so much for coming down. So please be uh, having a think about any kind of questions that you might want to ask our guests at any point. I'm just going to start proceedings a little bit by, you know, I'm kind of, I feel very kind of mindful and interested of the relevance of this concept of however we think of it, self-care, self-love. Uh, maybe there's some nuances between the two. Um, but this idea of kind of learning maybe for many of us uh maybe it's not something that our culture's kind of uh, got the greatest grasp of is actually you know raising people and, and nurturing people and helping people understand what it really really means to kind of like love themselves to care for themselves and things like that and i know that there's many people out there that, that str struggle for various different reasons and we're living in a society where we've got like large multinational corporations and advertisements and uh, consumerism is trying to make us kind of uh, in various ways kind of maybe feel not so great about ourselves, um, chipping away at our self-esteem, reminding us of the things that aren't perfect about ourselves so they will give them money to buy things that they're trying to convince us are going to make us better people and things like this. So on, on that level, there's a lot of that going on. But then also, make the, you know, I feel that the system that we're, that we're living in makes quite a bit of money out of us actually neglecting ourselves and treating ourselves badly. We live in a very sort of toxic society. There's a lot of poison and a lot of toxicity and there's all manner of different things that aren't particularly good for our health. And we're not really encouraged to take care of ourselves because it's not necessarily the most profitable way of organizing a society. I mean, they're just some sort of like my, my meanderings. I'm not suggesting that anyone here shares any of these thoughts, but that's kind of like you know, just touching upon a bit of context stuff. Jamie, I want to ask you, bro, because you've been a massive inspiration to me. I guess I'm in this, my second year of recovery uh, as an alcoholic. Um, I've been in recovery for just over a year. Aquarius helped me out quite a bit. I've been thinking a lot about recovery and the, the role and the relevance of kind of self-love and self-care. When it comes to recovery, and we can think about recovery from addiction, but maybe in any kind of form of healing or recovery that people might be in. I'm just interested if you've got any thoughts about this that you'd be willing to share. I think, to be honest, recovery is just a buzzword. Yeah, it's been called many things over a long period of time. Um, within the addiction service, a lot of what AA and NA and organisations like that were doing were finding people's self-worth and helping them get over addiction through that. It's, it is basically around principles of wellness and well-being and stuff like that. For me personally, it came around um, a lot of what I learned about myself came from the far, far Eastern thoughts and philosophies. And one of the first things I needed to start to do, and it's one of the hardest things I think anybody to do, is the whole principle of loving kindness around Buddhism and stuff like that. But if you can't love yourself and be kind to yourself, how can we manifest that into the community? Because um, in the Far Eastern thoughts, they believe in a thing called the loving mind. Now, we are all born with the loving mind. It is our natural state. 
and it's how we've survived. Yeah, all creatures are born, born with this loving mind. And that loving mind has always been a natural part of our thinking, but, and it never goes away. The trouble is, things impact that and start pushing it out. And that's where self-loathing, self, low self-esteem and all that come from. Because what happens is, because we stop loving who we are and loving who, what we can be, then we start neglecting our self-worth, our self-care. And that then leads into mental health issues, addiction issues, homelessness, and everything like that. And there's been a big shift within how we look at health over the last few years with things like a holistic view of social he social prescribing and stuff like that. And a lot of that is brought in the principle of how to teach somebody how to love themselves again. And from loving themselves, they then start taking care of themselves because they start feeling they're worthy of taking care of themselves. But then that manifests into, especially in the recovery movement, a major growth in actually giving back. And I'd say the big downside of the recovery movement up until recently was it had a very fight club mentality. The first rule of recovery is you don't tell people you're in recovery. But if you don't let people know that change is possible and hope is possible, how are they going to change and how are they going to find that out? So for me to start off with, by learning how to be kind and loving to yourself first, then progresses within to the larger community and society and family and makes changes from that. Thank you very much. Respect. And just very quickly, I will say that last year when I was in my first year of recovery, it was probably the first year of my adult life where I really did try and put as much emphasis as I could on trying to nourish myself adequately. And as a result of that, for the first time in, you know, 38 years, I felt that I had a much greater capacity then and a much, like, more accentuated sense of compassion and love for other people that allowed me to then actually kind of do the other work that I wanted to do in terms of being outward facing and doing community work on that level. So obviously these things aren't mutually exclusive things. They kind of feed into each other, don't they? Yeah, and it's, it's a knock-on effect because the trouble is, is how we treat ourselves is given permission on how people treat us. So if we don't have self-worth and self-kind, people will take advantage of that. And they see it as almost like a go-to judge. Well, if you don't think you're self-worth, why should I treat you any different? So what you do, as soon as you start having that respect for yourself and that kindness, you find that the people around you who are negative will move away from you and then draw people in who actually see that kindness and see that self-worth and will then nourish you to grow even more. Thank you very much. And Vanessa, I'm going to ask a similar question to yourself, if, if, if you don't mind. I mean, I'm just going to give a bit of, just for anybody that might have missed it. So Vanessa does a huge amount of work. Um, so International Women's Day is coming up on Saturday, March the 7th, I believe. And I know that you've done, you know, I imagine in various different capacities, a lot of female empowerment and kind of workshops surrounding things like transforming self-doubt into self-belief and things like this and I've, I've heard you speak about this issue on various occasions i just wondered if you you know your gem you know anything that you'd like to say about this particular issue generally or yeah thank, and thank you for the plug for international women's day it's appreciated uh yeah it's i think it's important for all of us and i think probably many of us can relate to a feeling at some point in our lives of not maybe be able to list anything we think is good about ourselves. I definitely was at that point um, through childhood, whether that was because of you know, school bullying or critical voices in my uh, with parenting roles and abandonment, uh, homelessness at a young age. And, you know, all of us, we overcome those, those knocks in life that can really knock our self-esteem. And I think it's been a real effort to resist that, you know, and learn to like myself. And so I'm really passionate about encouraging and supporting each other to do that because I think it's a radical political act in the world, as you described earlier, wants to make us feel rubbish about ourselves in order to sell us stuff that they promise will make us feel temporarily a bit better and keep buying it to make somebody else richer. And it's really messed up, isn't it? And it's so important that we resist that. So um, I volunteer as a youth mentor, which is one of uh, the absolute joys I've been doing for over 10 years, and work with young people who are at really challenging crossroads for various reasons in their lives. And so many of them say, when I ask them, what do you like about yourself? So few of them will list something when we first meet. 
Um, but over the months, you know, it's great to be able to build that confidence and they start to find the things that do matter and that they do love about themselves. And it's wonderful to see them just light up in front of me, you know, as they start to realize, actually, I have power, I have light, I have amazing gifts and talents. And those things mean more than the superficial things that we're told. But I think a really important point to mention is whilst all of us can be affected by that in society, there are layers upon layers upon layers of extra inequalities. So in particular, there are the added different things that each gender faces and those who are non-binary face because of the messages from the media, the airbrushing, um, those kind of pressures, and in particular, the intersections of being uh, a woman and disabled and not seeing yourself represented in the glossy magazines or ever held up as an example of beauty or success. Uh, for black women, for uh, LGBT communities, there are layer upon layer upon layer of things that exacerbate that feeling of self-loathing uh, through living in an oppressive world. So I think it's really important for us to recognize those multiple layers and help each other to shake it off as an act of political resistance. Thank you so much. So Sam, I'm going to come to you and like just to kind of touch upon again what you mentioned earlier. Um, it was wonderful last year when we was organising the Fry Festival, and that was one of the you know we we spent time together then organising that. And I remember yourself and Emma had come to one of the meetings, and you were talking about running. There was an idea for the self care cafe, and um, you know like you mentioned with Polly Talks, you touched upon it. So. I'm interested in your opinion generally, you know, touching upon anything that we're speaking about, about self-care, self-love, but with an awareness that you're actually running like a self-care cafe. And so I'm curious as to what, what it is about self-care that is, is so important to you and why you feel strongly about it. Um, my self-care seems to change on a regular basis, I think. I think it seems to adapt to whatever situation I'm in. Um, I find it's hugely important because it's it is self love at the end of the day, um, and I think that it's really important to know that pot potentially your perception of what your self care is to you might not be necessarily what is the best thing for you at that particular time and at that moment. So it's actually really important to be able to share those concepts with other people, and I think that's why the actual cafe is really important. So community wise we are just sharing the ideas together and I think it just so happens to be a really positive thing absolutely and I, I mean one thing that I really like about this as well is because I feel like self-help and self-care is so important I've always been somebody who I enjoy learning about social change and reading about social change and important big issues and I've also been somebody who's kind of like devoured quite a lot of self-help books and things like that and on one hand, felt a bit critical of them sometimes, because it feels almost like, accept the world as it is, with all of its isolation and loneliness and things like that, and just do what you can behind your, behind your closed doors, within your four walls, to try and like negotiate the difficulties of the world that exist. So this idea of like shining a light on the importance of self-care and self-love, but then doing it within a kind of collective context, I think it's really important. Do you mind if I ask you how it's gone? Because I know that you guys ran one, you, you've run one so far, two, so, uh, it's been a plant, hasn't it? Three. So, so you, okay. So Emma and Kelly have run the last two and it's been received really well, hasn't it? And um, the last one that I went to, literally, just people just would not shut up. <laughs> That's how amazing it was, people just, Sorry, I mean that in the nicest possible way. People just really want to help each other. That's all they want to do. And it, like you touched up on before, literally self-love is literally within us. And love, community as well, it's just in there. That's all of how I can describe it. Yeah, basically it just went exceptionally well and you just need to come along basically to come and find out what it's all about. Um, and we try and mix it up to make sure that it's not boring for people to come um yeah <laughs> fantastic wonderful thank you all i'm just going to see at this stage so i'd be really interested if anybody here at all has got any questions at all that they'd be willing to ask either any of our guests as individuals or you could just ask a general question and we can see if anybody's got a response to it 
Or if anybody would be willing to share an opinion, Dina, there's a mic. Oh, hello. Uh, just because you've just literally just mentioned that, I just want to find out um, when the next meeting is for the yeah. self-care cafe yeah, and, and how regular they are, what times they run. Yeah. Um, okay, so thank you very much. You can tell that I've not done this before. <laughs> um, the next self-care cafe is on Tuesday next week at 6.30 till 8.30 approximately at Plank Cafe on Sadlergate in Derby. And if, um, you follow Derby Rebel Projects on Facebook or type in DRP Self -ca Self Care Cafe Derby. You can find the information on there. Um, come and speak to me or Emma afterwards and we can find that information for you. Um, we've also got a mailing list as well. Um, at the moment, it's sort of really... We're sort of just trying to work with Plank Cafe at the moment, but we're just going to try and take it everywhere when we can. Did that answer all the questions? I'm sorry. Okay, so any questions about anything whatsoever that's been raised? Nicolette? Sorry, wait for Matt. Let, let Matt do the wrong thing, man, because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening, everything, but I was just wondering, with the self-care, um, so cafe, sorry, I don't know the term, um, what sort of kind of activities do you actually do that help people to then learn about self-care? Is it just talks, or are you, which way would you try to impact people? It's a work in progress at the moment, so I think we've found out that currently just facilitating an actual space for people to just come and express and share what self-care means to them. We're just sort of following a, a structure or a format, if you like, of an actual workshop that it lasts for about two hours. Um, we sort of give them the idea of just to talk about self-care. We'll ask a few questions um, and we sort of try and put different self-care, um, sorry, I don't know the right word, attributes, or we try and put them into different categories and we try and pair them up with each other. Um, and we're just sort of, we're open to suggestions as to how we can add things to that. I think the last one that Emma and Kelly did together, we had yoga involved as well. Um, yeah, it's, it, we're just open to ideas at the minute. And just a quick one, how, what's the age limits for that? It's open for everybody. Anybody, children can come along as well, no problem. Thank you for that. And any more questions? about anything that we've touched upon, or any thoughts, or any opinions. At the back, who's that? It's Lucy Kay. Thank you, Matt. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask Vanessa if she could tell us a bit more about any of the exciting things happening for International Women's Day. Thank you. I kind of linked a lot of it, the self-love as well. Uh, so on International Women's Day, it has been celebrated globally for over 100 years. Um, but Derby actually has a really special history. We were talking about this a bit earlier. Um, it links back to the suffragettes in our city, which isn't very well publicised, oddly, in Derby. Uh, but our claim to fame is on Derby Marketplace. Over a 1,000 women uh, gathered in crowds uh, to hear some of the major suffragette names you may have heard in history, like Emmeline Pankhurst and Sylvia Pankhurst, who's more to my political taste, uh, spoke in that marketplace for International Women's Day 100 years ago. So whenever I'm in Derby Marketplace, I feel that. So we are going to gather on the 7th of March on Derby Marketplace, and we're going to go on a march, a women's rights march, open to all genders, all ages, kids, everyone can join in. And we're going to march, sing, chant, bring banners, and spread a lot of joy, and uh, shout out about the things we still need to change in our world uh, to get equality. And then we have an event at Quad on the afternoon of the 7th of March. Uh, we've got amazing speakers. The hashtag theme is She Persisted. Some of you may know the story behind this. Uh, but it really celebrates women who've overcome barriers and despite all the knockbacks to our self-belief and all the people who told us you can't do that if you're a woman or a girl. We've got women who are firefighters, footballers, rock guitarists, drummers, politicians, campaigners, eco-warriors and all sorts doing amazing things. Uh, so yeah, come along. It's open to everybody. It'd be lovely to celebrate with you all. Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. Any more questions? It would be great if there's some more questions or ideas or thoughts or opinions that anybody would like to share. Oh, yes, Lee Reedy. Wait there. Oh, is, this, am I just, is this unfair? Is this oppressive now? There's one for you, Jonesy. Oh. How, how are you doing now with your sobriety after all this time? 
It's still, it's still. I feel a little bit humble and hesitant to say it because it almost comes across like, oh, yeah, whatever. But I feel amazing, man. I feel amazing. It's one of these things where it's hard to predict, like, how you're going to be feeling, like, uh, you know, over a year down the line. I mean, I read, I read a book, really great book, called The Unexpected Joy of Being Sober by Catherine Gray. And she kind of... Uh, that was quite inspiring. It was quite funny, but it was very sort of like uplifting. And, and you know, I was, I was like drinking excessively uh, for a long time. And I read that and thought like, oh, as if. I can't imagine feeling like that. I can't imagine feeling that good. But um, fortunately, and I, know, I appreciate that everybody experiences recovery differently. Uh, I, I totally understand that. And I feel very, you know, con like sensitive to that fact as well. But for me personally, I feel quite fortunate that where I'm at at the moment, it's almost starting to feel a bit like a distant memory, like a past life, like a totally, almost like a, I feel like I've almost been reincarnated or something. It's very strange. But I feel very grateful, you know, very, very fortunate. But the, and a big part of this, just to touch upon this, about the self-love and the collective care thing as well, do you know what I mean? Like a big part of that was about me finding support and the resources that I needed so that I could actually implement the kind of acts of self-care that I needed to implement. So I was on a bit of a mad, holistic kind of healing journey. I was experimenting with a lot of different things. But the thing that I really hold up and celebrate the most and really want to always advocate and celebrate the most was the absolutely crucial role that community and friendship and like quality relationships with other people like played in the process. And if it wasn't for the people in my community and the friends around me, then I just can't imagine it of occurring the way that it did. Do you know what I mean? So is there any other questions for anyone else? So Geordie Baines. It's a bit of a question to you um, as a collective, as well as a question to the audience. So firstly, my name's Jordy, as Simon said. I've been doing the sound for Simon for the past two of these events, and I'm humbled to be part of the situation because the amount of community love and the amount of, like, holistic healing I see has really changed my perspective on a lot of stuff. So first, and thank for, I want to say congrats and thank you to you guys. Big up. <coughs> Respect, man. Now, the question I've got is actually for you as the audience because... Um, being part of the sound for this, we're looking at, you know, having artists and running this kind of format where, you know, food and then some entertainment afterwards. You guys as a collective, like maybe by show of hands or something, do you like this format? Do you like the live music? Is it something that you feel should be part of this? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for taking that opportunity, Geordie. That was, that was great that you took the opportunity to get some feedback, bro. We've got some feedback forms as well, so we're gonna, sh we're gonna give them around very shortly. So um, we're gonna be at the stall at the back, so there's still some herbal teas, we've got some coffees available, we've got maybe a little bit of cocktail left, we've got the water kefir, we've got some kombucha, and we've got some fermented veg, so me, Dina, and Matt are gonna be at the back. Do your thing, and thank you for coming down. The money that we've raised tonight will be going to the community kitchen, uh, the community meal that we organise on the fourth Monday of this month. So please feel free to come along. That's a free event. You can just turn up and enjoy some amazing free food that me, Matt and Dina will be making for everybody. And then the money that we raise at that community meal will go to Thrive Derby to pay for the ongoing costs that Thrive Derby have. Thank you.